So welcome back to another episode of Everything Aviation Podcast. Today's guest, we have a fantastic one for you today. Uh, I do appreciate that this podcast can be quite male heavy. Uh, so in recognition of International Women's Day today, we have a breath of fresh air for you. Seven hours of fast jets, former model and now CEO of Europe's largest privately owned airport. It is Susanna Harvey. Susanna, how are we? Oh, I'm great. And thank you for uh, asking me on today. Not at all. Thank you for coming on. My first question is, I have to I ask everyone this because I'd love to know, is, is how did your interest in aviation come about? Uh, well, um, I didn't have much choice growing up because um, my father is an absolute um, AV geek nut and um, he, his story was he tried to join the Air Force um, as a pilot when he was 16, failed on his maths and became an aircraft engineer. So um, I've sort of grown up around that environment um, and uh, my in with the airport is um, my father actually purchased it in 2001. Um, I had a modelling agency at the time and there was a lot of synergy um, with the non-aviation related events that we did because uh, my, my modelling agency particularly specialised in motorsport events and they were developing that side of it at the airport and there was a lot of Formula One straight line testing etc. So I got asked oh, wow. to join to take over the non-aviation related activity and um, a bit of HR stuff um, and then it, uh, it was supposed to be two or three days a week alongside running my modelling agency. And um, anyone that's ever had any involvement with the airport knows it just sort of swallows you up because there's just so much going on and it's so busy. So um, I had to let the agency go and then I was working there full time. Um, and then the natural progression just sort of ended up moving into the CEO role. So it's all good. Uh, I was going to say that must have been some change because modelling and being involved in, in aviation or a CEO of an airport, mm -hmm. it, two completely different worlds. How did you find that transition? Uh, well, I hit the ground running <laughs> and sort of I've managed to wing it ever ever since. So um, excuse the pun. And um, but yeah, everything's great. You know, we um, I I generally mainly look after the commercial side of the of the airport. So I do all the business development. Um, I deal with all the boring sides. So um, solicitors, litigating, banks, um, all that kind of. Stuff, um, uh, structuring any funding for um, any development, etc. Um, doing projections with that. So I've got a really great, uh, my right hand man, Chris Ackroyd, who's um, he's ex army lieutenant colonel. Um, he he generally uh, looks after the uh, operational side of the airport and all the safety critical stuff. So um, we make a good pairing, really. So he he gets on and he gets to do all the fun stuff and flying and, and all the cool stuff like that. And I, yeah, I deal with the um, like commercial real estate, etc. So. Wow. Well, I guess you, you mentioned just all the flying stuff, um, but you're not shy of an L flight yourself. I believe you, you've done quite a few yeah. expeditions in, in flying. Yeah. Yeah. From also, so I got, I sort of grow up from a fairly young age um, with my dad and he, um, after we left the RAF, he was um, a gliding instructor and um, so I've had many, many, many hours flying gliders. Um, and then when we had all of the all of the hunters, the jet operation, um, Delta jets at the airport. So I, I was very lucky and I managed to get a few hours in JPs and uh, hunters, wow. which is but um, but yeah, I've been um, I, I was going to go and do um, my PPL um, in 2011 and then I fell pregnant with my twins who and sort of it's the end of life as you know and when you're sort of you've got twins that are running around and they're identical boys trying to generally rip each other's heads off most of the time so uh, that and running the airport I haven't quite got around and um, got off my backside to go and get it sorted but yeah it's on the list I need to get on and do my PPL so that's a bit mad you've, you've got seven hours and fast jets but I don't even have a PPL yet yeah. that's brilliant I, I have actually I've been to Toulouse as well with Airbus and I did all the flight training on the um, simulators there so I can actually land an A320 not that you, you just have a couple of buttons, but there's seven computers that run them at any one time. And there's a spare one. So if anything, there's any, any um, issue with the telemetry on all the computers, it drops one out and brings another one in. So, um, yeah, I, they, don't, they don't actually really even need a pilot. I can fly one. So. <laughs> I remember someone said to me actually before, I'm about to do a, an H320 SIM course myself. And um, I remember someone actually said, oh, you know, that you don't need pilots. But how many people would get on mm. an airplane without a pilot these days? And exactly. That's the why it's more the fluffy feel. Yeah, the feel good factor for the passengers, I think. So Exactly. So how did you, cause you mentioned going to Toulouse. How, how did that even come about? Oh, crikey. I mean, that was a long time ago. That was... Um, 
it was a it was like a club syndication thing where you got invited to do lots of different experiences um i can't even remember what it was called though but it was just um it was just as the first a380 had passed its flight tests um so it was it was literally just as it, it was it was coming into you know propagation circulation um commercially so a long time ago well, it's still really cool because you're getting to go and play with what a320s a380s mm, yeah it's um yeah there's, there's always lots going on so it's all good i love it absolutely brilliant so Susie, what is a typical day to day for you um, oh crikey um well normally there's a probably a bit of a meltdown in the morning trying to get my kids out to school um they have they have a 50 50 percent chance of getting the shoes on the right feet and every morning it's the wrong way around and uh yeah because, because they're, they're identical twin boys and they um they just turned uh, nine at the end of december um and they, they are so identical i even struggle to tell them apart a lot of the time i have to look at them side by side straight on um <laughs> And uh, yeah, so well, normally, obviously, when we're out of lockdown, um, you know, I drop them off at school and straight into work for eight thirty. Um, we start with our morning briefs, so all the departments uh, get together. Um, so we have a fire days, um, fire uh, fire section, someone from our restaurant as well, ops, and um, we have our morning powwow. So it normally lasts about forty minutes, um, and we go through the diary listings for the day and any significant events that are going on for the rest of the week um do the weather reports and then everyone goes off to their respective positions and you know the day cracks on really so and there's never a dull moment at the airport there's always something really exciting going on so find it out we're working in, in the airline industry myself and everything like that i'm, I'm based out of gatwick and uh, mm. like, like you said you can go in there any time of the night any time of the morning and there's there's something happening there's a hustle and bustle going on all the time um i, yeah. I just i take my hat off to you because i find it hard to try and it, it's like herding cats i could imagine yeah <laughs> uh, i've got you know i've really got the most amazing team though they're um, they're absolutely cracking and um you know very very lucky to to have everyone that we've got at the moment um and you know and the real testament to you know the t- sort of team effort that everyone's put in because it's been it's been pretty horrendous with lockdown um and the covid pandemic and you know everyone's really dug deep and um you know we're, we're just looking looking forward to you know onwards and upwards now and uh, the end's in sight and um you know sure as the sun's out and we're out of this lockdown we're going to be absolutely stacked again so it's brilliant how how did you let, let's rewind to this time say last year did you did you have any inkling it, it, it would be like this when when they announced that there was a new yeah virus? i had a <clears throat> i could see it coming and uh, everyone was like oh no it's something and nothing you know it'll be uh be a bit of a storm in a teacup and i'm like you do realize this will be going on for at least a year and i'm like no 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 don't be so silly but you know and here we are unfortunately it's um yeah it's um i'd say what, what i what i think of it but i probably can't swear to you <laughs> You use whatever you want to use. <laughs> Keep it clean, but um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, and it's been it's been really horrendous because we um, in it was October twenty nineteen. Sorry, I'm just getting my my ears right. No, we just reopened the restaurant um, because the the roof had actually blew off it. Um, oh no! I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the video online. I can probably put it up on my phone actually and show it to you. It's um, and we, we'd actually only had it replaced a couple of years previously, and um, it opened up like a sardine can. Wow! And, um, it was um, I was in a in a meeting with a solicitors at the time in the boardroom, and they said, "Oh, because they could see it happening behind me." They said, uh, "Oh shit, crikey, I thought we we better come back." So I don't know if I can show this to you. I'm going to try and see if you can see it on here. Yeah, yeah, got it there. So for anyone who's listening, uh, there's just a video here of the roof blowing off the uh, um, restaurant. There you go. Let's see if that's going to is that going to work now? And I'll press play. Yeah. yeah, it's playing at wow. <laughs> there you go. So, and, and then it 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 rained solidly for three months while the insurance company um, decided whether they were going to cough up or not, and um, that was a bit of a learning curve because I didn't realise insurance policies don't cover for bad workmanship. So it oh. rained, it rained, and it rained, and they finally conceded, and it went because it took so long to get them to cough up it went from an 80 grand claim to 670 odd thousand pounds jesus the <laughs> um, all the all the electrics all the underfloor heating the whole lot so so yeah so that was a real shame because we just got it reopened um by a couple of months and then we went straight into covid so and it's been closed for over a year now um wow. 
shiny brand new restaurant that's all kitted out inside. So, um, so yeah, hopefully we'll be at the ends at site. We've got a big outside seating area, and as soon as they start relaxing, um, you know, the legislation, I think which is going to be middle of middle of April, I think, isn't it? When people yeah, I think they were saying the twelfth of April or something like that. Yeah. So we hope everyone's going to come to the restaurant at Avio. Come and see us. One hundred percent. It's always been a place. Um, we, we've uh, I know Ben Atkinson who, who flies microlights out mm. of uh, Kemble. And um, it's, it's always been a place. I've seen his videos. It looks amazing. It's the only place I've ever known where I can do a takeoff and a landing with a line of 747s and jets and everything <laughs> around us. So it's always been a place in the bucket list to, to, to get up and visit. So we must, must do that as soon as we can start flying again, uh, make it a must do. Uh, but t- going back, actually talking about them jets, how were, were they just there for storage during the pandemic at, at first? Or yeah, was so um, required? the... Well, yeah, the problem is obviously the BA ones. Um, they were they were planning on um, on um, decommissioning their fleets in I think it was another three or four years time, and that's obviously just been brought forward. And um, so there are not all of them are, are being being broken. Um, obviously, there's Negus that we acquired. So I, I said to Chris one day, I said, I wonder if they'll if they give it, let us have one, um, because we've got an MK seven four seven as well, which is she's unfortunately got a bit battered over the years and um, needs a fair bit of money spending on her now that we use for sort of corporate events. And um, yeah, so I said to Chris, I wonder if we ask the question. He's like, oh yeah, let's go for it. And um, so I got on the phone to BA, asked them. They said, yeah, which one do you want? So I was like, I'll take that one. Um, and they were, you know, they, they've been really great. The, um, um, I mean, the plan was for the rest of the fleet to be scrapped, but um, there may be two or three that may be converted for cargo. Um, they're in negotiations um, at the moment. It's actually it's Air, Air Salvage International, my 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 tenants at work, and GCAM, which is a sister company, who do all the passing out and they basically recycle the high value parts. So any like avionics and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think they're in negotiations at the moment. I think it's a Russian airline that might be acquiring it for cargo, but you know it remains to be seen at the moment. So, but we've got a you know a lot of aircraft from. Um, uh, um, Air Tap, you know, Air Portugal at the moment, and um, a lot of those will go back into service, but probably with different airlines. The, the leasing company um, will probably then sell them on. So, wow, That's, it, it must be. I think you guys had jets before anyway, but just to see that kind of like pictures and all that of, of that mm. level of aircraft sat on the ground over this pandemic, yeah, it's amazing. Well, it's, we're we're really lucky, you know, and it's probably it's the only thing that's really kept us going throughout the pandemic because our ops revenue went to zero. Um, on the- of the CAA and the Department of Transport um, in the first lockdown, they sort of basically shut down all general aviation. So um, we, you know, our turnover just stopped overnight. Um, <clears throat> and the only thing that we're allowed to do is is allow the heavy airliners jets coming in for, um, you know, ferry flights and, and storage. So, are you still getting many in or many going out at all? Um, no, it's, it's certainly quite down at the moment. But the, um, I mean, that there will be, you know, the odd ones here and there. But I mean, they, you know, they do say. I mean, I've heard some stats saying that, you know, up to 60 percent of the, you know, the, the, the world's airliners will never go back into service at the moment. Um, obviously, technology is changing so quickly. You know, you're starting to see the A380s coming in for decommissioning now as well, which which unfortunately we can't take because we don't have the infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> the problem is, is actually getting access to them because they're so high. Um, mm. And that's why, you know, only certain airports can commercially take them for and getting the passengers on and off the aircraft so um yeah so that you know there might be a, a few more 737s and a320s at the moment but um we certainly haven't got any 74s booked in at the moment yeah that's mad i didn't i didn't know that that was a uh, you couldn't take the a380s just because of that but then saying that i do remember i think gatwick only has one stand and that's why they can only take one emirates a380 exactly because yeah. there's only one stand that can take it so yeah um, yeah, a bit, bit mad, but no, it's, it's it's good to see that it's keeping you guys afloat still. Um, yeah. By, by storing them, but it brings me back to the point of like, isn't it the the largest privately owned airport in in the in Europe? Um, Apparently so, um, and that, I think that's it's more down to with our runway length because we're we're only two meters shorter than Bristol, so oh, wow. it puts it all into perspective. Yeah. Because uh, I was got, like, that gives you the option to, to do it. Because it's like you don't see the likes of, uh, say, Shoreham or anything like that taking massive jets through all this. But mm. you guys are. And then there's a the fact that there's yeah. 747 sat there, one of the biggest airplanes in the world. And that, that blows my yeah. mind. That you, can, you can just yeah. take that. And go, yeah. Exactly. And it's, um, you know, we're, we're really, you know, we're, we're not, um, we, we wholly and totally support GA as well. But um, our business jet market will, will sort of start to, um, 
um, develop a bit more now because we are we, we've gone for our GNSS approach. So that's all just been rubber stamped. We're just waiting for Garmin to issue the place at the moment, and then it will be flight tested. And then you know, hopefully in the next couple of months it will be up and running. So um, it just gives us a lot more functionality in crappy weather. Um, so we don't you know people don't get diverted either into Gloucester or, or ever. So and our runway is more than Gloucester. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm never, I, yeah, I do a lot of competition flying with um, the, the Microlight World and we do did a bit, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a little farm strip called Over Farm and that's based just outside Gloucester. But we okay. do, this, uh, do all this stuff um, ju just outside of Gloucester zone. So we'd be flying around the place just outside their zone. And you can see them in the distance. And I, I, it took me a while to actually realise that was Gloucester because I thought, oh, that's quite a small little place. And I went, yeah, that, that's yeah. Gloucester's main hub. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, don't worry about them. Come to us. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, they weren't on my list to fly into, but you guys were. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Good stuff. So how, where did your plan of turning the 747 Negus into uh, an events platform come from? So um, it, it basically, it all started. I did, um, I did my first 747 party for my 34th birthday, which was nine years ago. And and um, it was um, it was an Air France 747 and um, I got the guys from ASI, they stripped it all out for me. So they took all the seats out. I gave it a good sweep and the stuff that you find underneath these seats is just absolutely minging. It, it's only about two days. And um, so, yeah, and we threw, uh, had the most epic party on it. And um, it kind of planted the seed um, going forward where we... Well, I repossessed the MK Airlines one because they owed me about £600,000 in back parking for the jets that they got there. There was two at the time. And um, so we repossessed those and they were both used for, it was the worldwide PR launch for Range Rover when they did the new sport shape as you know it now, which must be, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even longer. And then, um, so they cut, they cut one of the aircraft open. So they had like a, a ramp coming up in the back of it and like a uh -huh. um, thing sort of driving thing and then out through the front and then they came back and t-boned it so that was sort of cut to pieces in this driver assault course putting in and the other one which is the one that we've still got was converted for corporate hospitality so that ran for three months and they had about between 60 and 100 people in every day all pressed from all over the world uh -huh. and they were so so that was a good little learner for us and it certainly helped mitigate the losses that we'd had from MK um, with their bad debt. And then, um, and then um, obviously I asked the question about Niga. So it's, when we're contractually obliged to maintain her, um, which we're fully committed to do. So, but as part of that, we have to make a, a bit of a clear stand space. So it's commercially viable to hire it out for corporate events. So I've cleared with their permission, we cleaned out um, all of the economy seats, which are still for sale on eBay. I've seen yes. some of your posts actually. Um, yeah, there's, um, I think there's about, I don't know, 10 or 14 rows left at the moment. So, um, and um, so they're, yeah, they're for sale at the moment. The rest of the aircraft is staying completely as is and intact. And we will, she will be open for um, educational purposes. The schools can come to school visits. Obviously that will, there's no charge or cost involved for that for schools to participate in that and have a full tour of it. Um, but we'll then, to help with the costs, we will, she'll be hired out for corporate events, so weddings, product launches. Um, Panasonic very kindly agreed to leave the in-flight entertainment system in, which they still own. Brilliant. So it's on permanent loan. So the idea is that I hope we can do either fortnightly or monthly cinema screenings um, on the aircraft, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, but it's, um, she's actually going to be moved public side behind the restaurant. So I've got to put a new concrete apron in for her, which I've just had the first quote through, um, which I, I did cry for about an hour. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're working on just trying to, trying to bring that down at the moment because it, it, can, it, it looks like it's going to be anything up to about 80 grand to put the, put the concrete in oh. there. So, um, but we've just, um, we've just purchased a, a ground power unit for her as well, um, because running on the APU, it's noisy and it uses about 500 litres of fuel an hour. So it's expensive. Just for an APU run? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't the know that. Is the, you know, the heating system works through the APU. So, um, we, we're, we're now, we're looking at a, you know, a ground, um, air conditioning units, but we've got to sort of be a bit clever and, um, 
immersion tip with with converting it for running the heating as well because obviously you know if it's sat there doing nothing it's, it starts getting damp pretty quickly um so at the moment yeah we just we still run the apu a couple of times a week just to make sure she doesn't get too soggy and then um yeah we're just working on the other solutions at the moment. but we, you know we've been really overwhelmed with um um support for volunteers there's a great great chat that's based down at Heathrow called finn um and he's been very much hands-on with with helping us um you know get a maintenance plan together for and every, everything so it's almost like running another business um, the Seems it. So, um but it's really exciting and it's a really cool toy to have <laughs> I've, I've read it and it's amazing and um just to say because i flew home with my other half from miami on it in 2019 um and it was quite mm. a surprise and being a big massive av geek i was like oh my god we're flying to one of the special library la, la, la. so it was it was great to see but then i feel really old the fact that i flew home on it in 2019 and now it's retired in a museum piece Mm. Um, yeah she won't be going anywhere she's going to be well looked after i'm looking forward to that we must come up and have a look yeah. at it and uh, it, it brings like you're saying about another business i was gonna say when, when it kind of is another business when you you purchase something and have to build an extra mm. concrete ramp for something yeah so and the plan is because we run a scholarship program every year as well where we take um 10 or 12 kids on for a couple of weeks and they get about five hours flight training um get to go to you know rolls royce airbus everything like that so they get a full board spec um, of experiences they also get to go to Bryce as well and to go and have a look around there so um the plan is is anything we make profit wise over and above her direct running costs we're going to put back into the scholarship program so hopefully it'll pay for a couple of kids to go through their ppls every year that's amazing and what, what made you want to do that scholarship program because i was reading about it last night and it seems to go yeah. back quite a bit yeah, no, we set it up, it's probably 11 or 12 years ago now. Um, obviously, we couldn't do anything last year because um, of the pandemic. But it was just, um, you know, it was between sort of me and my dad. And we sort of said it would be great to do something to put something back. And we're in this very, very fortunate position to um, be able to throw some money at it as well. So um, just, uh, you know, it's just just doing doing something good and, you know, for the local community. Because it's, it's generally it's open for kids in Wiltshire and Gloucestershire um between 14 and 18 and you know it's it you know we have kids applying for it um we, we normally get between two and three hundred applicants every year but we have kids applying for it that are just so, so desperate to get any you know flight time or any experiences you know they're working sort of three or four paper rounds and uh you know every hour god sends to try and save up so they can have some tuition and it really does give them a big leg up so there's quite a big hit rate as well as about 40, 50 percent go on to have a career in aviation. Right. And the year before last, with the, the last year that we actually did the scholarship program, um, we had uh, a girl there instructing who was our first on our first ever round of scholarships. And there she was in full circle as flight instructor taking the next batch up. So it was really good. That's really, really cool. And what I love about it is as well is that I definitely think our sport needs more, say, open to more young people as well, showing them that aviation is affordable and, and it's achievable. And mm. I'm, I do quite a bit of work with the BMAA and we've got a, a BMAA scholarship going at the moment as well for microlights. So it's fantastic to see you guys getting involved as well. And mm. I, I didn't realise you send them out to like Airbus, Rolls Royce, everything like that. I think that's absolutely yeah. amazing and what an opportunity at that age to do as yeah. well. Yeah, I think you're a bit too young to apply for it, I'm afraid. Oh, that mentally, I am. Uh... <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> it's yeah, always no, it's next year cool. when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't fly a plane and grow up, that's the trouble. Do you know what? My dad said that to me before. And he was, I said, oh, I want to be a pilot when I grow up. My man laughed. I was like, what are you laughing at? My dad was like, well, you don't be a pilot and grow up. You can't up. do both, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what fun is growing up anyway? It's a trap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so what has been your favourite kind of th throughout everything that you've done flying uh, owning the Cot or CEO Cotswolds Airport and stuff what has been your your most amazing moment to say stands out uh god crikey most amazing moment um god that's a hard one there's been so many you know I'm just really I'm so proud of what we've achieved and, it, and it's really it's down to the team um I mean I think you know establishing the scholarship program is quite a poignant sort of marker really because it really does it makes such a significant difference to so many people's lives hmm. i mean i've had letters from you know the parents of these some of these kids and saying you know they've gone in with um you know when they've had some sort of issues or whatnot and it's it, they, they sort of say it literally has saved their life um it's given them like a new new direction and um you know a new passion and it's you know for something something for them to get their teeth stuck into so you know i think that's um you know it's quite profound really at your 
doing something good and, and sort of really helping people. But, um, I, you know, I know the other thing is probably just, be, you know, Quarry Negus. I mean, it's a real, real coup for us. And, um, you know, the the news of it is is gone completely worldwide. And the amount of love and support that we have been shown is just incredible. It really is quite heartwarming, particularly when such shitty times at the moment with, with yeah. this pandemic. Um, you know, and it's just everyone's got is they're so excited uh, with the prospect of what we're going to do with it, and they're really behind it. Yeah, and the sports has been overwhelming. So, brilliant. Well, you're saying like all this good news about new Negus and stuff. It's the only thing I think I saw through 2020 where everyone is is taking a dive and everything's gone wrong. But then then there's you guys posting, we've acquired this. This is what we're doing with it, and it was, yeah. it was the first good news story I'd heard in about six months. Uh, throughout yeah. that, that whole pandemic which was which was amazing to see so now I do take my hat off to you which which is fantastic with it. and again with the scholarships like I said I think everyone should be should be introduced or even experience aviation in their lifetime just to just to say yeah I've done it and, and see what it mm. was like yeah no it's all good and we're very happy I'm really happy I, I can see that and it's brilliant to talk to someone like full of enthusiasm like that <laughs> yeah. even though your capacity <laughs> bucket is probably like up to here with it all <laughs> And thank, and thank you Susie and thank you so much for your time that's wonderful thanks for asking me you're very welcome have a good one Susie thanks a million cheers bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.